Welcome to It's Spooky Podcast, where we talk about paranormal events, both well-known and not so well-known. Hola, guys. It's Cat and Tiny. We're here on It's Spooky Podcast, and today we're going to be talking about the Silent Twins. So, the Silent Twins, I wouldn't say it's true crime, considering they're technically it wasn't a murder that happened, but it's just the weirdest case of twins I've ever heard. I've ever heard. And also, considering it's not even the United States, that's probably one of the reasons why I never even heard of this. I actually heard of this from from one of my inspirations actually for this podcast. Um, Kendall Ray, she does mostly true crime, but she also does a lot of paranormal stuff. You should probably go check out because she also did a video on this, and it's just this is just a, the craziest case I've ever heard. Who were the Silent Twins? Well, they were identical twins, June and Jennifer, who originated from Barbados and moved to the UK during the the Western generation with their parents Gloria and Aubrey Gibbons. However, they were actually born in Aden, Yemen on April 11th, 1963, where their father worked as part of the Royal Fort the Royal Air Force. The family then settled in, I'm probably going to butcher this, Haverford West, Wales, but struggled to fit in due to their accent and language, which was Beijing Creole. And due to their accents and language barrier, their crafts race find it difficult to understand them, that they were the only black children in the community, which made their British life immensely challenging. Why didn't the Silent Twins speak? Teachers noticed that the twins would only talk to themselves and refused to read and write. They also developed their own secret language which nobody else could understand and which meant June and Jennifer further isolated them from their family. But it wasn't until 1976 when a doctor arrived at the school to give the students their tuberculosis jabs when the medic noticed their peculiar behavior. Unlike most students, June and Jennifer showed no emotion when getting the injection, which prompted the doctor to, co- to contact a child psychiatrist. After visiting with the psychiatrist, the girls were taken to see a speech therapist at, at Withy Bush Hospital. And it was here where the therapist recorded them speaking and managed to decipher their secret language, which actually turned out to be a blend of English and Beijing slang spoken extremely extremely fast. A year later, the twins' parents agreed to separate them to see if their behavior changed when they were apart. June, however, refused to cooperate and stopped physically moving, spending most of her time lying in bed at her residential care unit. Due to this, the staff who treated the girls struggled to determine whether there was a more dominant figure in their relationship, meaning they didn't know which of the twins was the domineering one who was the, the follower. Journalist and mental health campaigner Marjorie Wallace, kn- who knew the twins, shared her thoughts in their relationship. They had these rituals where they decided between them which one would wake first, which one would breathe first, and the other wasn't allowed to breathe until the first one breathed. She revealed according to Wells online. Quote, it was like some sinister childhood game that got out of control. June and Jennifer were known for their love of writing. Police later found a large stack of diaries, poems, essay, and short stories, some written about crime. They had such a talent for storytelling that June's book titled Pepsi Cola Addict about a student being seduced by a teacher was self-published. Why were the silent twins arrested? Their behavior took another unexplained turn in October 1981 when they embarked on a five-week spree committing vandalism, burglary, and arson. They were later caught trying to burn down Pembrokeshire Technical College. Following a trial at Swansea Crown Court, June and Jennifer pleaded guilty to 16 counts of burglary, theft, and arson, and were sentenced to indefinite detention at Broadmoor under the Mental Health Act. 
what happened at Broadmoor Hospital. Broadmoor has housed some of the country's most notorious criminals, such as the Yorkshire Ripper, Peter Sotcliffe, and East End gangsters Ronnie and Reggie Cray. During her time at Broadmoor, Jennifer wrote in a diary entry, I really aim to be alone, yet I am deceiving myself. Can I stand being alone? My heart does not beat so fast now. It only beats fast when Jay is around. While the twins did continue to write, during their 12-year Broadmoor stint, they were mostly heavily medicated during that time and their volume of diaries and novels noticeably decreased. How did Jennifer Gibbons die? In 1993, the girls were transferred to the medium security unit at Bridgen's Grand Ride Hospital. However, Jennifer became incredibly weak on arrival at the clinic and was taken to the Princess of Wales Hospital. She died there at 6.30 p.m. on the 9th of March at age 29. A post-mortem report revealed the cause of death, of death to be an undiagnosed Mordecaudius. However, in an interview after Jennifer's death, June revealed they had a death pact. Quote, We said we weren't going to speak to anybody. I'm going to have to die. Unquote. The journals explain, At that point, I got very, very frightened because I could see that they meant it. And then they said, We made a pact. Quote, Jennifer has got to die because they said the day that they left Broad Broadmoor, the day that they were free from the Shakura Hospital, one of them would have to give up their life to really enable the other one to be free. Where is June Gibbons now? June remained at Caswell for another year after Jennifer's death, but later returned to West Wales to build a new life for herself without her sister. She still lives in the area near her parents, but has tried to keep out of the spotlight, save for some precious interviews. Jennifer is buried under a gravestone which is engraved with a poem written by June. It reads, We once were two, we two made one, we no more two, through life be one, rest in peace. Their case became so prolific that the Manic Street Preacher's 1995 song, Tsunami, was inspired by the sisters. Well, that was the end of that article, so... Okay, so pretty much my thoughts is... Is that pretty much this this was supposed to be like one... Like one soul in the room, but somehow... What I'm getting at is pretty much... It's one soul between two people and the simple fact that like the weird ritual where one had where one would breathe but the other couldn't until that first one was done breathing then they could breathe and just simultaneously breathing but like at different intervals that makes sense i personally like like what tiny said is i believe that they just had an intense feeling of, of that sharing soul to the point that they really couldn't function properly mm. and clearly people noticed and that it, it was just to the point where one of them needed to go. It was like they were fighting for existence when they needed to be existing as one. June is thriving now and in functioning and writing books and you know, like it's it's interesting that after the twin passed the other was in fact able to thrive and survive mm -hmm. so i personally am inclined to believe they do in fact share a soul what do you guys think please leave your comments in the section below and we'll see you in the next podcast bye-bye please leave your questions down below